Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about this 3D printed C3PO foot. Uh, it's technically a shoe. I mean, I can wear it. It's flexible. It's made out of the same TPU filament that I used to make the hands from the last video. Um, and it came out pretty freaking good. So we're going to discuss this a little bit right now. Now, one of the questions you might be asking if you've been on my channel for any amount of time is, uh, hey, didn't you just make a video how you're going to make a mold for those feet? Uh, and the answer is yes. And basically, this was used as a test to make sure that the parts that I've been working on in 3D space would actually look right and fit right before I printed a mold, which is, you know, each mold I think is at least four prints per mold that are pretty involved. Uh, and before I go through all the trouble to make all those pieces and print all those pieces and clean up all those pieces, I wanted to make sure that it was going to fit right and that there weren't any issues that I was going to want to address before I went through all that trouble. And there were a couple. Remember, this is pretty minor stuff, but I'm glad I did this. So um, let's see where to start. First of all, the overall shape is really good, minus uh, a couple things. The tip of the shoe is slightly rounded, and uh, if you look at a casting, it's much closer uh, relation to a real shoe. You can see it's very flat. This one has a little bit of roundness, and the angles where the, the sides meet the front of the shoe are more dramatic here. This is something that's on the actual Don Post statue, and I corrected it a little bit here, but I didn't do it enough. So looking at it now, I feel like, I'm like yeah, I need to make a, a little bit better angles here. Um, the sole is going to be slightly less tall, just a hair, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch shorter. And um, the tread on the bottom, this was just done for the 3D print. However, the distance, these are all weird sizes. This is how they are on the movie suit, but I made them a little bit broader so they were closer to the edge so that I could print it without doing supports. And I also made a little brim that went all the way around the sides. It came all the way down to the print bed so that it printed the, the treads and then that brim and then everything else just was bridging. I didn't do any support material on these at all. Um, so when I do the final, the cast version, I'm going to make these correct, like the movie suit. They're a little bit smaller, a um, little bit smaller in width, I should say. But the weird, the weird sizes is all kind of like, just like this. Um, and I guess on the final one too, the actual cast versions will be slightly thicker. Like this flexibility is really good for the filament, but the rubber that I'm using is a little more flexible, so I can afford to go just a hair thicker with the rubber version and keep the same amount of flexibility. And I think it'll hold up well, and then now I can also do fabric reinforcements, yada, yada, yada. We'll get into that when the time comes. But it was a good test, and it was a good enough test that I'm going to go ahead and do those couple mods and print the left foot to match this. I'm going to leave the sole the same on the left foot, but the, I'm going to correct those, the tip and the, the little angles here and print the left foot um, with, you know, the proper detail. It's not a mirror. The left foot is not a mirror of the right foot. So um, I'm going to print the left foot with the mods. I'll get into like why it's not a mirror and why it is because part of it is mirrored, part of it is not. I think I described that in another video. Sorry for the confusion. Um... But yeah, once those are done, and I'm happy with them, I'll post the 3D printable full foot on Thingiverse for free. Um, and then I'm still going to continue with the mold. So if I get these all the molded versions really cleaned up and nice and castable. If someone wants to get a, a cast rubber version of an entire foot, um, I'll be happy to make them uh, if the mold works the way that I want. But if not, and you just want to print one out of this TPU or even like a display foot, I may make a version with like the bottom cut out for mannequin. Um, same top but yeah so this is a look i feel like i was going to talk about this a little more oh what i was going to say is that i intended to show basically how i set this up in zbrush but i realized that it was going to take a long time and it probably deserves its own video so if you're interested in seeing this setup for zbrush and how i hollowed it out did the cuts and made the pieces uh, interact etc um i can go into that and do a whole video if anybody wants to see it but so far, there we go. 3D printed, flexible, rubber, wearable foot. Let's go try it on.
So as you can see, it is uh, completely wearable. It's actually pretty comfortable. And, and overall, it came out pretty good. Um, a couple things with the, uh, the print that I had to address since the last video when I did the hands. If you saw the hand video, you saw that I had some major stringing issues on, on the fingers. And some of the th things in the comments were things I was going to try anyway. And there's a couple things in there that I didn't think of that were good. And then there were some comments that kind of just aren't going to matter a lot. Like there's a lot about the, the, the Bowden tube. And the tube on the CR10 uh, S5 I've got is really narrow. It fits the filament very well. Unlike the A-net, the Bowden tube on this printer is terrible. The Bowden tube on this one's good. However, it is almost two feet long. So even the great Bowden tube with a two foot long piece of uh, spaghetti like filament, it's not, this stuff stretches a lot. It's not going to make a huge difference. What did help was uh, I got a suggestion about upping the retraction distance. Uh, and I did that uh, almost, I think I did it up to like six millimeter retraction distance. I have to check. And it made a, that made a big difference. Um, I turned the fan speed way up. So it was a lot of cooling between the jumps. And I turned the temperature down. And what else? Is that it? That might be it. That must, might be the three things. But that made a big difference. So I still got some stringing, but it was really, really, really fine. Let me see if I can get one. I pulled most of it out already. There's some on the outside here. But uh, I mean, it barely shows up in camera. I mean, almost, let me see, can you see that? It's super, super fine. Barely there. Whereas the last on the hands, it's really, really thick and burly. And on here, it's just like, it looks like a little piece of dog hair. So it's really, really fine. So I think a hair more tweaking and I can get it like totally sorted out. Um, and there's some roughness on the surface just because I printed this at 0.3 millimeter layer height. I didn't do this some kind of crazy detailed print. So I'm sure if you went to like two or even like a one and a half, it'd probably look way nicer. But uh, yeah, so those are the print adjustments. I'm probably going to do a whole video just on print settings after I figure out how to get this to work on this printer, this printer, and that printer, this printer here, and you know, talk about the, the differences and pros and cons, etc. But yeah, overall, pretty happy with this. Once it's all um, completed, the other shoe, I will put them on Thingiverse for free, so they'll be downloadable, printable as is. Uh, I may do a version without the sole it's just an open version that you could use for a cap if you're into that thing i i don't like the shoe caps personally uh or you could use it for display so if you have a mannequin and you need to run a, a piece of piping through the foot or something you can just print it with a hollow bottom that's also handy uh but yeah they'll be up there and then um probably be a couple weeks so i gotta print the other foot and then uh, once that's good that'll be posted and i also post the moldable the mold version when I get to it. Anyway, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Probably made this video like four times and I keep like getting lost. And now when I do it, I can't remember what I've said and what I haven't said. The convenience of uh, being able to just record stuff over and over can also be a detriment because it's so easy to redo stuff. But I got to get back to work. So thanks guys for stopping by. I will be back soon with some more freaking stuff. Uh, again, let me know if you want to see that ZBrush video. And, um, yeah, I'll be back in no time. Thanks again. See you kids soon. Later!